What is up you guys, Austin Marks here. Today I'm going to talk about how one can become a respiratory therapist. To start out, I just want to tell you what my channel is about a little bit. So not everyone knows what a respiratory therapist is, or what we do in the healthcare field, or the hospital in general. So therefore, I make videos talking about what I do in my life. Um, I'm going to be starting a Day in the Life of Respiratory Therapist series here soon. So make sure you guys like and subscribe, check that out. I talk about the schooling, the boards, the licensing, things of that sort. I'm also going to be applying to PA school here in the next few years. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. I'll be helping other students get into PA school. So make sure you guys like and subscribe if you want to see that as well. So most people think that respiratory therapy is a cert. So a certification. So such as like EMTs or CNAs, they just get their certification and they're done. That's not the case with respiratory. Respiratory is an actual degree. I have my associates in respiratory care and I'm working on my bachelor's right now on respiratory care. A program has to be accredited by the Commission the Commission Accreditation of Respiratory Care, also known as COARC. There are over 400 uh, schools in the United States that are accredited by this. Most programs are either an associate's or a bachelor's degree. So, like I said, I got my associate's degree, I started working in my hospital, and now they're paying for my bachelor's degree. A lot of you are probably thinking right now, well, does it matter if I have my associate's or my bachelor's? Not really. I mean, it looks better if you have your bachelor's, but if you're going the hiring process and they see that someone has your bachelor's and someone has their associates, yes, the bachelor's does look a whole lot better. However, it comes down to who you are as a person. Can you think on your feet? Can you critically think? Um, are you, do you have better skills? Do you have more experience? Things of that sort. I'm going to be making another video talking about the differences of having a bachelor's versus having associates. In both cases, though, you need to actually apply for the program. So therefore, you need to go ahead and get your gen eds out of the way. You need to do excellent on them. Um, depends. Every year is a little different. The number of applicants for the number of seats. So if you have 30 seats, but only 28 applicants, then you're most likely guaranteed a spot. However, if there are 30 seats and 40 applicants, then it comes down to potentially your GPA. They're doing an interview process. They're just going to see if you're going to be a better fit to become a respiratory therapist. So therefore, you need to have good people skills as well as a good GPA. Do you want to make sure that you can actually make it through a respiratory school? For example, I started out with 18 and I graduated with 6. Respiratory school is not easy, however, it's not the hardest thing in the world. You just got to be very disciplined and have a good head on your shoulders. Like I said, I got my associates and then after my gen eds, I got that out of the way and my actual program was only a year and a half. So I went to school for about two years, two and a half years or so. I went to a community college, so that was a whole lot cheaper than going to a larger college, just as a state college and getting my four-year degree. A state school generally costs more. So therefore, going to a community college and getting your associates, in my opinion, is a lot smarter. I told you the ratio of how many I started with and how many actually passed. About 30,000 people become RTs each year, so it's definitely possible, guys. I have faith in you. You guys can definitely do it. So after you go ahead and you graduate, you gotta sit down for your boards. Now if you have a bachelor's or an associate's degree, we take the same test. So once again, it comes down to, do I really need my bachelor's or do I need my associates to start working in the hospital? Now there are two different kinds of tests, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. You have a multiple choice and then you have a clinical simulation one. And the scoring is all wonky, so like I said, I'm gonna make another video. However, once you pass that test, you need to go ahead and apply for your state license. Now if you go ahead and you go to school in New Jersey, but you want to start working in Ohio, you can go ahead and do that. You don't need to take another test or anything. All you gotta do is apply for a license in Ohio. This may cost a little more. I'm not too sure. I've never done this personally myself. So after you go ahead and get your license, you can't just be done. Uh, <laughs> once you start working in the hospital, you need to go ahead and get continuing education at credits. So you need 30 every two years, so you can get this by going to seminars, doing different classes, just building on your skills and your experience, learning new things. You also need to renew your license every five years, I believe, and you can do this through the, uh, the AARC. If you guys have any other questions about what my process was like, getting in school, things of that sort, go ahead and leave it in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.